Up next, let's talk to Cattle Markets. Joining us here at his feed yard, Mike Briggs. Briggs Feed Yard, thanks for having us out here once again. Nice to see you guys. What's we're, going on? We are on the heels of a big election. We've got uh, national implications, and the talk today as we visit on Wednesday late morning is all about the ag sector and how the ag industry is responding to the news. When it comes to the set, cattle sector, your focus area, how are you absorbing this? To me, the world feels like it's back on its axis because I didn't think we were going in the right direction and now I think we will. Now it's gonna be interesting as we go forward because President Trump has talked about tariffs. Tariffs can cause inflation and tariffs can wreck exports. I don't, I don't think that's gonna to have too much of an effect on beef. The thing that's been interesting lately on beef is our exports are tremendous with prices at all time highs. That's what's really interesting to me. But I, I, look for, I look for better things as we go forward after this election. Let's get into some of the Im things impacting the cattle sector right now. Let's just bring up uh, live cattle in particular to start the conversation, Mike. Since about, uh, I guess, the end of October, we had a trend downward. What's the reason why? Well, we always kind of go up towards the end of the year. Now last year we made it all the way to Thanksgiving before it kind of whittled away. This year it's whittling away a little earlier. I think a lot of that is price. Even though demand is really good, I think price is stymieing some people. We are putting huge amounts of beef on the market. We are not slaughtering as many cattle as last year, but the cattle are so big that we're putting the same amount of beef on the market or more. And I just, I think the consumer is really struggling. Um, so I think that's a lot of it and it's a timing issue. You know, we kind of struggle from the 1st of December all the way till we get into March and I don't think this year is going to be any different. You bring up the weights and something the industry has been tracking a lot lately. You're giving me your take, uh, you're giving me your take on why that is. In particular, feed is cheap right now, why not put the pounds on? Feed is cheap, why not put the pounds on? You can't replace them. You cannot go out and buy a feeder that's gonna make money most of the time. So why would you get rid of the ones you have to go buy a loser? I don't think that changes. In fact, I think it might get worse. There'll be opportunities here and there and you have to watch and when the window opens, you better be grabbing because it's not gonna last very long. Um, I, it's, it's more of, it's, I just think we're in our seasonal deal right now. Mm -hmm. Look at the feeder cattle on the futures chart. Not as uh, aggressive of a downturn, kind of holding their own at the moment. Anything you're watching on that front? At the moment, yeah. I, I Once again, I just think, okay, last week they came out with a report that fund length was in an all-time high in the live cattle market. That's great. We've had a really nice rally. It's the same old thing. We like the funds when they're pushing it up. But, man, if they decide to get out, it's just gonna be a straight drop down. And I think you could be starting that. And we don't always know what triggers those funds, but you get to the point where they decide to hit that trap door and down we go, this is gonna to be tough. That'll pr pressure your feeders down, but I don't think they're gonna get pressured down because there's not a big supply of them. So until something from the cattle market hits it, I, I think they're just gonna kinda of hang. But I don't, once this whole thing starts to go, I, they're gonna go down with. Mm -hmm. What is the seasonal trend? You were talking about December, March time frame. What do things typically look like? You know, the worst beef demand months of the year, January and February. It's cold, nobody's got their grill out. You know, it's just not exactly what you want. And we struggle with that every year. People, people spend all their money in December on Christmas gifts. And so it, you kind of struggle through those months. And until it starts to warm up again and the grills come back out, we really struggle with beef demand. And I think, I think that's gonna be the same thing. I really think we could struggle here for a little bit. It's a bit like Groundhog Day. Every time we're visiting with you, we're talking about heifer retention and the size of the U.S. cattle herd. Got a new, another report out on that over the last month showing that people are not retaining heifers. And I think it surprises some people, but as a feedlot owner, what are your thoughts on why heifer retention? We're not seeing that. It doesn't surprise me at all. I've been arguing with people all year. We, you have got to have grass. You've got to have feed for these cattle that they can harvest yourself. You can't, that they can harvest themselves. You cannot afford to feed these heifers. So you've got high priced heifers, first of all, Guys are going to take their money and run. They want to keep the cheap heifers, and they're not cheap right now. The other thing is we just haven't had enough moisture that they've got enough grass to throw these cattle out on. I have a very large customer. He had 800 head of heifers out, on, out that he was going to breed and keep. 
they're all coming here because he doesn't have any grass. And it's, it's really unfortunate, but I think he's, he's a really good example of what's going on. And it's what I've told people all year. People are not going to retain heifers unless they've got enough grass, that we have enough moisture. Now, our hay supplies are pretty good, but once again, you don't want to feed those animals. You want them to be able to harvest their own feed, and it's not there to harvest, so can't keep them. What are you hearing across the region? Feedlots full at this point? People uh, being able to replace what's in what they're getting rid of in the pen? You know, last month I kind of heard people were filling up. Now I'm starting to hear it's getting a little spotty. I don't really know what that is other than, hey, my cattle were fat. They had to go. I can't replace them. Now I'm, I'm concerned as we go forward because I do think there's going to come a time where this market just flat rolls over. If you don't have your cattle protected, I don't know if the banker is going to be there to hold your hand. He might be there to stand on your head when you're underwater. I'm not sure. I don't want to be in that position. But this, this market could get really tough. I think this thing rolls over and it could wipe a few people out if you're not positioned properly. So I'm kind of scared about that as they go forward. A little after, fear. After protect yourself, let's uh, round it out with your wise words this time around. <laughs> My wise words, wise words are protect yourself. And I, I really think that we could struggle. We've had our fall up. I think we're going to struggle clear through the winter, but we'll see. Well, thanks for your take on things, Mike. We appreciate it. Thank you.